Bonjour Julia engineers, welcome to my problem a day series. In this video, we're going to do problem on fluid mechanics. We're going to calculate the height and we're going to use the friction equation from Darcy. Now, if you're for the first time and you just want to learn about engineering or just how to engineer a better life, don't forget to subscribe and make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Now let's get started. Oh yeah, everybody now. So this is what we're given. Water is at 80 degrees Fahrenheit, flow rate is 2 cubic feet per second. We have a galvanized iron pipe with a diameter 4 inches, the length is 80 feet, epsilon is 0 0.005, and then the kinematic viscosity is 9.15 times 10 to the power of minus 6 feet squared per second. And we need to calculate the required depth of the water in the tank above the pipe center line, which means this height right here, from here to the center of the pipeline. Okay guys, so the first thing we're going to do is use the Bernoulli end energy equation. So we have H1 is equal to H2 plus the head loss. Now the head loss here, we definitely have a uh, loss due to friction and we're going to use Darcy equation, which is on page 110 because we were giving the viscosity and the epsilon. So let's uh, start first identifying the head friction, and then we can come back to this equation, let's call it one for now, and then we can just plug in the rest. So to calculate the head friction, we first need to calculate Reynolds number, and then from there, if it's less than 2000, then we have liminar flow, but if it's greater than 4000, we have uh, turbulent flow and if it's turbulent then we have to do epsilon over d and then we have to use the moody chart to identify the f factor okay so let's calculate the reynolds number so reynolds number it's on page 109 so you are given the equation so this is what we have i have re is equal to the diameter times v which is the velocity divided by the dynamic viscosity now, we don't really have V, but we have the flow rate, so we can totally calculate V. So let's calculate V first, and then we can come back to this equation. So because it's steady, incompressible flow, we have Q is equal to VA. So V is equal to Q over A. Now Q is equal to 2 cubic feet per second. The area, we're going to use the area of a circle, which is pi over 4 times d. d is 4 inch. Divide that by 12 to convert it to feet, because we need to have uh, stay consistent with the units. This is squared. So we have pi over 4 d squared. If you plug in this, you'll get um, 22.92 feet per second. Now, after this, now we can go back here and plug in. So I have d is... 4 inch, divide that by 12, same thing, we have to have the same unit, so this is to convert it into feet. Now V is 22.92 feet per second, and the viscosity, it was given to us here, but we were also given the temperature. So, if you weren't given the viscosity, but you were given the temperature, you actually need to go to this table right here and you were given 80 degrees Fahrenheit and you find what's your viscosity here. But here, because it's given to us, so we're just going to use this number. So which is 9.5, so let's write it down. So I have 9.15 times 10 to the power of minus six feet squared per second. So this is equal to 8.35 times 10 to the power of 5. And this is greater than 4,000. So this is a turbulence flow. So we have to use the Moody chart. Now let's go to the Moody chart and you guys will see what we need to calculate next. So here we calculate Reynolds number, right? And then here we need to calculate epsilon over D so for us, so that we can find the friction factor F. So let's calculate that. So I have epsilon over D. Now epsilon is 0 0.0005. Divide that by 4 inch. Again, you have to always convert to feet. So this is 0 0.0015. 
Now, if you go to the Moody chart, we have 8.35 times to the 10 to the power of 5, so it's going to be somewhere here. So note, guys, that this is this is the 8 times 10 to the power of 5, not this one. This is 8 10 to the power of 4. So this is 1 times 10 to the power of 5. This is 2 times 10 to the power of 5. A lot of people get confused with this chart. So this is our 8 times 10 to the power of 5. So because we got 8 here. So this is 8 times 10 to the power of 5. And then we have 0 0.0015. So that's going to be somewhere here between this number and this number. So if we follow that and then we hit 8, so we're going to get something like 0 0.022. That's close to here. We found that F, the friction factor, is 0 0.022. So now let's go back to equation 1 and plug in all the numbers. So we have P1 over gamma plus V1 squared over 2G plus Z1 is equal to P2 over gamma plus V2 squared over 2G plus C2 plus the head friction. And let's write the equation for the head friction. It's on page 110. So I have F times L over D times V squared over 2G. So now we have everything. All we got to do is plug in the numbers and solve. But Let's point out a couple things here. So let's go back to our diagram. So let's call this number 1. Let's call this point here 2. Let's pick this our datum. So if this is our datum, that means Z2 is going to be 0 because we're starting right there. We're not moving anywhere. And that's going to be Z1. So this is Z1. This is what we're trying to solve for. Now at the surface, at the water surface, we always have V is 0 and the pressure is 0 because it's just stagnant. So those are zeros. Now at 2 here, again, it's at the surface, my pressure is 0. Now V2, we already calculated, which is 22.92. So the rest, all we need to do is just plug in. So this is, we said this is 0. We're trying to look for this. This is 0. V2 is 0. Z2 is 0 because that's our datum. So now I have Z1, which is H1, which is what we're trying to look for. So I have H1 is equal to V2 squared over 2G plus my head friction, which is F, L over D, V squared over 2G. Now we can factor out the V squared over 2G. So I get 1 plus F times L over D. V was 22.92 feet per second squared times g, which is 32.2, that's just gravity, feet per second squared, times 1 plus my friction factor, which is 0 0.022. My length was 80 feet, and um, divide that by 4 inch, divided by 12. Don't forget to convert. If you plug in this, you'll get an answer of 51.23 feet. And that's going to be answer C. Okay, guys, so on the next video, we're going to do a problem on continuity equation. It is very similar to a question I got on my EFE exam. So make sure you hit the bell so you get notified when I release the video. And if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and make sure you share with your friends who might find it helpful. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you soon. A la prochaine. Oh, yeah. Everybody now.